Hey there, my name is Sarah, and since it's apparently the middle of June, I thought that I would do the mid-year book freakout tag. So I have a list of questions printed off, and I also have my handy-dandy notebook where I track all of the books that I've read so far in 2018. I haven't been on Goodreads for pretty much all of 2018, and I've just been tracking my books read and my TBR like pen and paper style, which jury's out on which one I prefer, but it's been interesting to like switch it up for a little bit. So far this year I have read 24 books, which I mean, it's fine, but I'm coming off of a really intense reading year last year, like I read 366 books in total in 2017, which like, that's too much, I don't recommend it, way too much, but it's really weird to go from reading 30 plus books in a month to suddenly now like half the year's over I've only read 24 books in the month of June like I literally I haven't read a single book I haven't picked up a single book it's the weirdest feeling like who am I but anyway I've got my list of books I've got my questions linked to the original video will be in the description and we are going to get started Question number one is what is the best book you have read so far in 2018? And for me, that is Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. This is a book about a character named Johnny Appleseed, who is a self-described two-spirit indigiqueer and Indian glitter princess. And I just love the main character and the whole book so much. This is a book about life on and off the res, about finding your way home, about sex work, about family. And I just think that it is so beautifully written and amazing and I love it to pieces. Question number two is best sequel that you have read so far in 2018. I read a total of one sequel so far this year and I didn't enjoy it so we're gonna skip this question because I don't have much good to say about it. Question number three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to and I picked The Amateurs by Liz Harmer which incidentally isn't just one I desperately want to read, it's also one that I have to read and soon because I got it for free from a publisher in exchange for a review and boy have I been procrastinating on that one. See also that thing where I haven't read a single book this month. Anyway, this book sounds phenomenal. It's kind of post-apocalyptic fiction about time-space travel triggered by people's memories and nostalgia, I think and it's recommended for fans of the Leftovers TV series. I love the TV series. I love the book. I also really love this pineapple thing on the front, and I have no idea what the significance to that is, but I'm sure it's good. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Definitely Women Talking by Miriam Taves. I'm so excited to get a new book by Miriam Taves. Question number five is biggest disappointment and am I allowed to say myself for my failure at like reading on a regular basis? I'm gonna say myself. Also just reading in general has been disappointing me this year which is a weird feeling and I don't like it. I feel like I have been not enthused by so many of the books that I have picked up this year and I have been DNFing titles like left and right and it's just kind of weird because I feel like I'm not able to get really absorbed in my reading and disappear into a book the way I want to or the way that I used to. So that's also very disappointing. Question number six is biggest surprise and I had a lot of trouble picking a book for this one because I feel like out of everything that I've read this year there hasn't really been a book where like the plot or the characters or the writing style or whatever has been surprising to me like for better or for worse. But anyway I did pick the book The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. If you're not familiar with this one it is a retelling of the Iliad from the perspective of Patroclus. So I was reading this book and I was thinking to myself, wow, I remember so much about the Iliad. Like, I kind of know what's going to happen. I know the basic shape of the plot. I'm really impressed with this because I have not had anything to do with the Iliad since I was in first year university and took some classical studies classes. And that was like almost a decade ago. So I was really impressed with my memory. And then I got to the end of the book and I went, no, hang on, I've read this. And... I did read it before. I read it on audiobook and for whatever reason it just didn't register with me. So that, I mean, I'm gonna count that as a surprise. And also as proof of why I don't 
read audiobooks anymore because apparently I don't like absorb them properly. I don't know. Question number seven is favorite new author, and this can be a debut author or one who is new to you. And I picked an author who is new to me, and that is Joey Como. So Joey Como is the author of four books, and he is also behind the webcomic A Softer World. I picked up his book Malagash this year, which is about a girl whose father is dying and she is bound and determined to have him live forever through a computer virus. And while that makes it sound a lot like science fiction, it is definitely not science fiction. It's just a really heartbreaking, somehow funny, realistic book about illness and loss and family and I love it so much and I'm going to be checking out more of Joey Como's books. Question number eight is newest fictional crush um, and I'm gonna pass on that one because I don't really get crushes on fictional characters. Question number nine is newest favorite character and I picked Johnny Appleseed because I feel like he is such a compelling narrator, such a great main character and it's not often that after I finish a book, I will continue to think about the main character that much. Like generally speaking, I read a book, I finish it, it's done, I move on with my life and read the next thing. But Johnny Appleseed has been sticking with me a lot. So he's definitely a favorite character from this year. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. And a lot of books have made me cry this year because a lot of things make me cry in general. I am one of those people for whom emotion just kind of comes out of me in the form of tears. So crying over books happens a lot. I think I'm up to 16 books this year where I've kind of anywhere from teared up to like all out started crying. But for this question, I had to pick Our Short History by Laura Grodstein. And this is not a book that I really loved, nor is it one I would have picked up on my own but it's one that I was required to read for work. And this has the honor of making me cry a lot at work immediately before it got really busy and I had to help a lot of people while like drying my eyes and trying not to look like I was just like crying and devastated over fictional characters. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy and I picked Nice Try Jane Sinner by Leanne Olke. This is a young adult book about college and about a student-run reality TV show, and it was just a really fun, engaging read. Question number 12 is favorite book to film adaptation that you saw this year. Definitely love Simon. That was such a sweet movie, and I cried in the theater. Surprise. Question number 13 is favorite video you have done so far this year. I have done a total of one other video, so I guess I'm gonna have to go with that one, which would be my new to booktube tag. Question number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought or received so far this year, and I'm gonna have to go with The City Still Breathing by Matthew Haiti. This is published by Coach House Books, and like all Coach House Books, the paper is beautiful. I love reading Coach House Books because I will make it part way through and then realize that I've been like petting the pages like a weirdo. So I'm a big fan of the paper quality. I'm a big fan of like the physical construction of their books in general. So yes, this is definitely my choice for most beautiful book I've bought. Question number 15 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I was totally prepared to say none because that's kind of the point of me barely being on Goodreads this year. Like I don't want to feel pressured to read a certain number of books as part of a reading challenge because I take those reading challenges like way too seriously. I don't want to have an unmanageable TBR list following me around. I just want to be at a point where I can pick up a book and if I want to read it, I'll read it. And if I don't want to read it, I'll put it back down and that's totally fine. But of course, has it worked out that way this year? No, it hasn't. So here is a non-exhaustive list of books that I need to read and review as soon as possible. They definitely need to be done by the end of the year. They probably should have been done by now. The Dark Days Pact by Alison Goodman. Just Let Me Look at You by Bill Gaston. In Pryor's Wood by G.M. Mallier, Tiger Tiger by Joanna Skipsrud, When the Scientific Secrets of Perfect Timing by Daniel H. Pink, On the Up by Shiloh Jones, What Are We Doing Here by Marilyn Robinson, The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner, Shadow Scale by Rachel Hartman, Darkness Sing Me a Song by David Housewright, 
Big Potential by Sean Acor, The Cutout Girl by Bart Van Ness, Up From Freedom by Wayne Grady, Our House by Louise Candlish, Perfect Is Boring by Tyra Banks and Carolyn London, The Fashion Committee by Susan Juby, Of course, The Amateurs by Liz Harmer, and then a lot more that are currently in the mail. So it looks like I'm going to be busy and I'm not at all annoyed at myself for procrastinating on this. And on that note, that is it for my mid-year book freakout tag. I clearly have a lot of reading to do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!